Hey guys, what's up here? Have you ever watched a Lee Sin montage and thought to yourself, holy crap, what did I just watch? Whether watching plays from professional players like Insect or Rush, or the solo queue gods like Gripex and Sally Berry, few things are as capturing and inspiring as a good Lee Sin. Now, have you ever wanted to be one of those Lee Sins? To be able to pull off all of those moves like in the montages? Well, in my six step Lee Sin guide, I mention what it takes to become a good Lee Sin. And one of the things I bring up is pulling off his advanced moves and mechanics. So today, that's what we're gonna take a look at. I'll be telling you not only what his advanced moves are, but also how to pull them off and when you'll want to do so. So without further ado, let's get cracking. The first advanced mechanic I wanna show you today is the old classic insect. Now most of you will be already aware of what an insect is and we're starting off with it today, not only because it's Lee Sin's more basic and universally useful move, but it will also be the foundation of some of the more complex moves coming up in the list later on. The insect is a great move for displacing enemies, whether that's in ganks or in teamfights, and it's a solid way to catch opponents out and make easy picks. The way you operate an insect is first by tagging an enemy with your Q, flying towards them, and then as you're about to land, you place a ward behind them, jump to it with your W, and then kick them with your ultimate. The biggest thing you'll need to practice in order to nail the insect is to be quick yet precise with the transition of your cursor placement, first from the enemy when firing the Q, to then where you want your ward hop to be. In addition, you'll also need to smart cast both your ward placement and your ward hop in order to pull the move off as slickly as possible. The next mechanic I want to talk about is what I like to call the ladder insect. I call it this because it's a form of insect that uses a different opponent, like a ladder, to reach your actual target. Yes, a very inventive name, I know. The ladder insect is very useful in late game or in crowded teamfights when standard insects are very unlikely to work for two reasons. Firstly, it's hard to hit your Q on anyone that isn't a massive tank in the front line in those teamfights. And secondly, landing your Q on an enemy causes them to panic and the enemy team will be very hyper vigilant at your presence and make moves to cock block you at all costs. So essentially, the ladder insect removes the need to hit a carry with your Q and also acts as an element of surprise for the carries who aren't expecting you to come in onto them. Executing a ladder insect is very similar to a standard insect, except you'll be aiming your Q at a different target to the one you'll eventually want to kick. You'll need to track the position of your end victim in relation to that of the person you're going to be queuing to, and then follow with putting that ward that allows you to move from that first target to your second. This may also require you to use your flash to get a good solid positioning on that second target, but if done properly, it is totally worth it. The next tip is about animation cancelling with flash. This removes the animation of your E and your R to allow you to pull off moves smoother, faster, and with less opportunities for a reaction from your opponents. To do this quite simply, all you gotta do is use your E and then instantly flash onto the enemy or use your ultimate, then position your cursor behind the enemy and then press flash. If you're fast enough, your flash will cancel the E and the R animations. Flashing early can also cancel dates or your teaching license, but that's not really relevant to this video. Next up is a tip with smiting. Lee Sin's Q hits the first target it comes in contact with, which includes minions. Enemies will often stand behind minions as a form of safety against Lee Sin's Q. By firing your Q and then immediately smiting the minion that would otherwise block the shot, you can eliminate the minion and hit the skill. This is especially effective because enemies will have a false sense of security when standing behind minions, so won't be expecting to get hit and therefore won't juke it or dodge it. Unless you're pretty ahead in levels, though, your smite will only be enough to kill the caster minions, so this tip is unlikely to work on melees unless they are already damaged. This tip coming up is one about putting on your blue suede shoes. When your Q has landed, enemies will try to protect themselves. One way they will do this is to try and lock you down so either you can't reactivate the Q or so that you get interrupted while flying in. Put on your dancing shoes and you can avoid a lot of this. It depends a lot on who you're playing against though, but dodging or protecting the CC skill shots will give you an edge at times. Land the Q, place the ward down to the side and jump to it, and then follow through with that Q. This tip can also be used for if your Q has landed but the opponent is too far away for you to follow, except instead of placing your ward to the side, you can use it as a gap closer. 
Coming out now, I want to talk about Lee Sin's Kick Collateral. Now, this is all about lining up your ultimate so that the enemy goes flying into as many people as possible. Getting a multiple person kick can be an extremely effective way to not only win a fight, but to hit targets with your ulti that would otherwise be out of range. Despite not requiring any insane mechanics by itself, lining up the kick can be very tricky. You need to not only get the angle right, but also understand the velocity at which your victim goes helplessly flailing towards the enemies. Oftentimes you'll want to purposefully reposition using either your W or your flash, so that when you kick the target, they go flying into someone else. In addition, this technique is also very often used in connection with other moves such as the ladder insect, so you do need good foresight and plenty of practice to pull it off. So we're almost at the end of the list here and it's time to talk a little bit about using Lee Sin's Execute properly. When fighting an opponent, specifically when you're 1v1ing them, you want to maximise the damage of your Q which does more damage the lower health your opponent is on. This means that the second part of your Q needs to come out as late as possible and after you've done as much damage and used as many abilities as possible. So instead of landing the Q, following it to close distance and then fighting, you should land the Q, ward hop or flashing close and then auto attack, use your E, auto attack or skip an auto attack if you think your Q might time out and then use your ultimate and then follow through with your second Q. Now if that sounds a bit complicated, all it really is in theory is throwing everything including the kitchen sink at an enemy, then kicking them, and then following through with your second Q. Not only does this enable the execute, but it also allows you to follow up your kick to continue the fight. Before we get on to the last point, I just want to thank you guys for watching so far, and if you have enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like down below. Now, I also want to ask you guys, who inspired you to learn Lee Sin? Was it someone from the professional scene? Was it a streamer? Was it a montage maker? Let me know in the comments down below. So the last tip here is something that was brought to my attention by Celiberry, who is a challenger Lee Sin on Oshana. He calls this move the Dragon Insect. Essentially, it's using Dragon's Wing Buffet to launch yourself towards an enemy or to escape. You fire your Q at the Dragon, fly into him, then position yourself on the other side of him so he knocks you forward. Then you can proceed to either jump the wall, jump into an enemy, or just keep walking. Anyway, that does it for this video. If you're interested in seeing my six step Lee Sin guide or watching me play Lee Sin in game, I'll leave a link to those videos in the description. And also you'll find the sources for all of the clips used in this video in the description down below as well. But guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, and catch me streaming over at twitch.tv slash foxshop. You can subscribe to here for more educational league content. But most importantly, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And I will see you in my next video.